welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is that this beautiful eye look has been created with two different palettes. One of my eyes has Jeffree Star Blue Blood. The other one has the Revolution Forever Flawless Ice Palette. So, the question is which side is high end and which side is drugstore? What do you think? Is this revolution? Or is this revolution? I'll make it a bit easy for you. I'll zoom you in. There you go, look. This is my right side, this is my left side. Which one's Jeffree Star and which one is Revolution? There really is only one way to find out. And that's to grab a drink, grab a snack, Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Uh, faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd, and primed. And on my eyes, I've got my usual Crow and Pebble eyeshadow base in shade Cotton. Now, you will have seen in the intro. I have shown you these two palettes. The new Revolution Forever Flawless Ice and the Jeffree Blue Blood. Now I will have shown you close-ups of my eyes, hopefully I remember to do that in the intro. And I want you to guess, before you watch the rest of the video, I just want you to pause this, go down to the comments section and I want you to guess whether my right side or my left side is high end. So, just to remind you, I'm holding these up upside down so I don't dazzle you because both have got very large middles. So, we've got Jeffrey this side on the screen and Revolution this side on the screen. That does not mean that Jeffrey is this side and Revolution is this side. It's just how I picked them up. So, you can see, when you see that by itself, you think, ah, oh, that's Jeffrey Blue Blood. And then you see it alongside Jeffrey's and you're like, mm, is it though? So I went through and I swatched all of these this morning. Both palettes. My arm is currently red raw from continually taking swatches off that stained my arm because I didn't put primer on it first. Clever me. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to pop some pictures up on screen of the closest matches. If I lean this way, I'll put them here. Right. The first swatch is Jeffrey. The second swatch is Revolution. So the first two are Mint Tea and Crystal. Second two are Blue Blood and Freeze. Third ones are Untouchable and Climate. Fourth ones are Power and Titanic, but Power in Jeffreys is a matte and Titanic in Revolution is a shimmer. And then we've got Deceased and Ocean, and again Deceased in Jeffreys is a satin. And then the next arm, same arm but different photo, 
we've got Blue Monday and Arctic, again Geoffrey first then Revolution, Flourishing and Melt, Wealthy and Frostbite and then Cullinan and Cool. So you can see, I mean the, there are a lot in here that I thought oh yeah that's going to match that one and that's going to match that one and they were just miles apart because a lot of Geoffrey's blues have got purple undertones, a lot of his what look like beiges have got like a pink undertone to them. Um, it can be very deceptive, shall we say. Um, so those are the closest I've got and even some of those are not bang on dupes but they are as close as I could get. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Revolution on one eye and I'm going to use Jeffrey on the other eye of the four closest shades just to see whether we can get a comparable look. Um, I'm also going to film a separate look with this um, using some of the other shades just so that we can see how some of the other shades perform. Um, but yeah, that's basically what this one is. So have you guessed, is my right side Jeffrey or is my left side Jeffrey? I have no idea what that was and I apologise immediately. <coughs> Let's get you zoomed in. Right. Long term viewers will know that... Oh. Didn't get all the swatches off. That's not what long term viewers know. Long term viewers know that I'm actually a teaching channel. Uh, and that combined with my chronic pain can mean that I blend slower than a lot of people. I also go in depth with my descriptions of things and I do all my blending in real time. If this is annoying to you and I'm not going fast enough, please feel free to use the speed widget and speed me up. I won't be offended because let's be honest I'm not going to know. Uh, I'm going to be using um, ch my, my cheaper brushes, my ones from AliExpress, rather than using my Royal and Langnickel. Um, although I will probably use the Royal and Langnickel when I use the ice palette on its own, just to see how good we can get it. But assuming you haven't got high-end brushes, I'm going to be using sort of drugstore price brushes. Now, as always, I'm going to quickly run through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded eyes because a lot of people think they've got hooded lids when they haven't. Now, when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your static lid completely covers right down to the lash line your mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. If you have that, you can still follow my tutorial. Get a brush something like this, or a pencil brush, and on your static lid, just mark where you need your new crease to fall. Alright. That will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do. Now, if you have deep set eyes like I do, sometimes I'm hearing them referred to as double lidded eyes now, you have the same issues that people with hooded lids have in that we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. When we cut our crease, we can't just cut across the socket, we have to come onto the upper lid. And even when we use glitter glue, we get a bare patch right through there. Let me show you why. If I cover my mobile lid, and close my eye. You can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away. And then if I cover my upper lid and do the same, you can see I've got a patch there. So I've got a good sort of seven or eight mils of skin that folds back in, which is why I get similar issues. Um, the best way to deal with that is when you are putting colours on, if you want them to appear above your crease. Make sure when you've applied them that you sit back, you relax your brows and you check you've gone up high enough with them. Right, shall we begin? 
Right, I'm going to start off with the revolution on this side. So if you guessed revolution on the right hand side, Jeffrey on the left, you were absolutely right. Um, I'm using brush number six, the tapered blending brush from the AliExpress set that I list in my which brushes do I recommend and I'm cleaning it between each colour using a microfiber cloth. Right, let's get started. So I'm going to go in to Melt, which is the teal in this palette. Fair amount of kick up in pan, but that doesn't worry me because just tap your brush back off by tapping like this over the pan itself. And then when we go back in next time to pick up some more pigment, we can just pick up the kick up. So I'm going to start off up here. I'm just going to very lightly just start a little bit of circular blending. Now the beauty of this Crow and Pebble eye base is that it's not sticky. So you can go straight in with blending. You don't have to pack it on first. How many of these are pressed pigments? Uh, H2O and climate are both pressed pigments but that's fine because I don't think I'm using either of those today. So I pick up some of that kick up and I'm just I try to leave sort of four or five mils at least between the top colour or the bright colour and my brow. I'm probably going to go in and blend that edge out in a minute with some of the, one of the creamier colours but for the time being I'm just getting this teal on and getting it built up to the kind of colour that I want and get the edges nicely blended. Now I do struggle here and here on both eyes because of deep creasing and I've also got ridiculous deep creases here this is the eye I'm blinding that got pulled around a lot when I was a kid and it's caused that super deep creasing so I do sometimes have to stretch this lid out in order to make sure there's no white gaps but normally doing this sort of circular blending you know when you're coming away from the nose going in this direction and when you're coming back to the nose doing it in that direction what that does is it very carefully moves the skin on your eyelid around always hold the brush right at the end so you put as little pressure on your lids as possible and you can see that's actually because blues and greens and purples are the most difficult colours to create so that's actually gone on a lot better than I was expecting I will be completely honest with you there right. Clean the brush off. And that's my phone falling down. Fabulous. And let's go into a blue blood palette. And I'm going to be using the shade Flourishing. This side. Jeffrey's um, flourishing is, is pressed more firmly than the Revolution shade, which is why I was picking up more pigment initially from the Revolution palette because more of it was kicking up there's much less kick up in the pan in Jeffrey's but you can see the pigment is there it's not that it's lacking pigment it's just that it's it's pressed firmer it's a slightly slightly more firm um, eye shade and that can make a difference to how easily at least with a soft eye shade, you know you're getting pigment up onto the brush. But then of course the reverse of that is that 
when you have a more firmly packed shade they do travel better they're much less likely to get damaged when you're uh, traveling around but I would always always advise you to carry any breakable makeup in your hand luggage if you are flying or if anybody else is going to be handling your case on a train or a coach now surprisingly this one actually blended out easier than this one did you can see I'm starting to get a bit of a a bald patch just here so if you do that you just go back in and just tap the pigment into place and it has gone slightly deeper that side than on the revolution side so we need to just build the colour up so that we give it as good a chance as possible so I'm cleaning the brush off again to make sure I don't carry any of the Jeffrey pigment over but these blues and greens will stain the brush. Right, back into melt this side. And let's just tap that on and build the pigment up. So you have the same, I mean you can see there is a slight difference in shade. You'll certainly be able to get comparable looks using the Revolution palette. It's not an exact dupe of the Jeffrey one, but if you can't afford the Jeffrey one, then it's a really good option, giving you, you know, it'll give you very similar looks, put it that way. I'm just getting that off of the brush again. And I'm going to go into a frostbite in the Revolution palette, which is the creamy colour, right next door to Melt, funnily enough. And I'm just going to use that to very, very lightly buff that top edge. really gently softening that top line and just lightening it up slightly on that top edge there mm. And now I'm going to go into the Jeffrey palette and the corresponding shade is Wealthy. So I'll do the same thing this side. And Wealthy out along that top edge just to really soften the teal a little bit. I would have liked to have gone in with something like um, mint tea first and carried that up the eye but I just couldn't find a good match for it in the Revolution palette and for this particular test I wanted to make the eyes look as comparable as possible. So I chose the shades that were most alike. Okay. So far so good. Now we could come for a cropper. Because now I'm going to go through the crease and the outer V with a grey. The only issue is it's the shimmer in this palette and it's a matte in Jeffrey's palette. However, hopefully, if I can blend the shimmer well enough, 
you should find with a shimmer if you if you blend it carefully enough you can blend the shimmer pigment away and just leave the base tone so I'm hoping that's what I'm going to manage to do and I've grabbed this elf blending eye brush because I don't want it to splay too far up the eye so I just spotted that I had a piece of fluff right in the corner of my eye and it was bugging me right so in this one it's called Titanic Let's hope it doesn't sink this look. Oh, I'm sorry. My husband is the king of puns um, and apparently having lived with him for as long as I have and been married for as long as I have, it would appear I'm picking them up. Not a lot of kick up in this at all. So I'm going to start off by very gently buffing that in very, very small backwards and forth windscreen wiper movements across to the middle and then do the full windscreen wiper because I didn't want to get any loose particles flopping down I'm just going to very very carefully and very lightly just blend out on that line just to soften that edge and I'm picking up a little bit of pigment each time that I do this just so we don't lose any of the, the depth of colour and I'm just going to very very carefully buff again the little short backwards and forwards windscreen wipers all the way across where the grey meets the teal to soften that edge up a little bit. Now, if you've got deep set eyes like me, now's the point to sit here and check that you can see the deep colour over the top. If you've moved your crease, you will obviously have been following where you moved your crease to. Now, I do usually put a deeper colour through the crease because then if you have got hooded lids and you've had to create your own crease, when you're standing back talking to people because it's darker it will look as if that part of the eye is going back further so it will give you the impression that you have still got the crease there I'm just going to lightly buff just on the outer third of the lid I am very much relying on muscle memory right now because I cannot see a thing I'm hoping I'm in camera and I'm hoping I'm in focus. Oh, look at that. Right, so I'm just going to... This is the only problem that you get when you are... Because you have to buff the shimmer pigments away and just leave the base colour, you can end up with some patching like this. All you can do is just keep adding more pigment and just keep doing the circular movements until you've built the colour up and have got rid of as much of the shimmer element as possible. Okay. Now, time to go to the other eye. Just cleaning the brush off. I'm going to go into power. Looking at the colours in here, that's power, you would assume that cremated was a closer shade, but this is actually the right one because cremated has got more of a blue undertone to it. So again, we start off with little tiny windscreen wiper movements backwards and forwards to lay the colour down and then go into a full sweep what I might have to do is add some of that deeper shade 
and a little bit if this blends out too light but that's okay what we're trying to do is get the eyes to look as similar as possible and obviously it's going to involve much less blending this side because I don't need to blend away the shimmer pigment I'm literally just blending the matte yeah. see this is what I mean about you getting that sort of horrible sort of barcoding or tiger striping all I can do is just really lightly stretch the lid out don't do this if you don't have to, most people with the circular movements and the little windscreen wipers will work for everybody. It's only because I had that super super deep creasing that it doesn't work for me. So you can see when it initially went on it didn't look like it was going to be deep enough. But once you've built the pigment up, it looks the same. As I said, mattes are a lot easier to blend than shimmers because shimmers are not designed to be blended, but you can blend them. Okay. And now the final bit for the upper lid. I'm just going to clean this brush off. Now when I go into the Cullinan shade in the Jeffrey palette that is so softly packed you have to be super super careful with it um, or you will end up with chunks of it everywhere but I'm going to actually grab this is clean but it's it's stained from the green look that I did. I'm just going to make sure there's absolutely no pigment left on there before I dip into a white. Yeah. So I'm going to go into cool in the revolution side. Now initially I'm going to apply these dry. Just going to grab a little mirror so I can look down into it so you can still see what I'm doing. I'm just going to pop this onto the two thirds of the lid. But so far, hasn't had any pigment added to it. Right, let's try wetting it and see how it looks. Now, never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will get hard pan. And I know a lot of people say, ah, oh, it's alright, I'll just scrape the hard pan off. Yeah, but eventually it will soak through the entire uh, pressed pigment or pressed eyeshadow and you won't be able to scrape the top off. So always get it on your brush first and then wet your brush. I always dry this ferrule off by just sort of twisting it like this against my fingers so you don't get any moisture coming down and loosening the glue that's holding those bristles in. Yeah, that gives a more of an impact. It's probably going to be one of these ones that would apply best with a finger, but obviously with my nails. These are the times when the things we normally chuck away, the sponge tip applicators, can come in super useful. Because they can apply it as if it were on your finger. So, there's cool. 
Now I'm guessing I'm going to have to use Cullinan Dry because that is such a bright white shade. I don't think Cool is going to be able to match it if I wet Cullinan. So let's dry this brush off and clean it off. And let's go into the Cullinan shade. I think you can see what I mean instantly there, can't you, with the amount of pigment that puts down. And this is dry, this is not a wet pigment. So I've dried that brush off. Right, I am going to pause you while I tidy this lot up and chuck some foundation etc on and I'll be back to finish off the under eye. So you're going to see me instantly and I will see you the very next time I press the record button. Hello, I am back. As you see I have gone for tealy blue brows. Um, it's another one of the Revolution um, brow pomades and it's in the shade Trendy Turquoise or Turquoise if you're a Brit. Right, I'm grabbing this brush that I showed you earlier and I am going to go into Let's go into Titanic and I'm just going to pick up the grey here and buff it along the lower lash line, clean the brush. Power in the blue bird. Just... I always flinch doing this side where I'm blind in this eye. A number of times I've had to cut out where I've poked myself in the eye. You would not believe it. Well, I've got blue blood open, I might as well finish off this side first, might I? Right, now this brush was actually a tart brush from the Swamp Queen palette, the uh, collaboration they did with Graveyard Girl. I like it because it's flat at the top, but it's chunky, so it's great for getting up under your bottom lashes. Ooh, hmm, now which colour should I blend it out with? I think I'll go into that teal again, which in this one was flourishing. Just buff that along the lower lash line. Just to soften the edge. Like so. Clean the brush. And go into Melt in the Revolution one. that one out in exactly the same way. Just like that. And I'm now going to grab a highlighter. I think I'm going to go for the Nikki Ofra collab called Space Baby. 
this is the one with the blue shift to it. This is a lip brush that I bought off of eBay probably about a decade ago now. But it's absolutely perfect for getting up under the tail of your brow. To add in a little bit of highlight. And by a little bit of course I mean a lot because I like my highlight. And go into the inner corner here and with my shape eyes I actually like to bring it under the tear duct and just buff it into the start of the colours we've got coming underneath the eye and do the same this side you can just leave it at the inner corner like that if you like as I said I just on me I prefer just to finish it off right I'm going to pause you one last time while I do mascara, chuck this um, highlighter over the rest of my face, put some lippy on, do something with my hair, and I'll be back with the final look. Uh, there we go. I am back. I thought I'd add my little blue pearl headband. Uh, mascara is the uh, Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect, um, the green leaded one. They got green, they got pink, they got purple. I think they've now got a blue one, which is the waterproof. But I love this green one. And the lippy is an Oh My Glitter in chocolate lavender. I love this. Listen, it's. Magnetic closure. Now you'll know I can sit here and do this for hours. Uh, this is what she looks like. Beautiful bullet. I'm not going to pull her all the way out, obviously. But, there we go. That's the lippy. I do have a discount code for Oh My Glitter. It's listed with all my other ones in the description box below. But, this is the finished look with Jeffree Star on this side. Revolution on this side. Now I am really really pleased with this result. Um, when I was swatching them seeing how difficult it was to get precise matches between them all um, I, I honestly didn't expect to be able to get this close a result so I'm super super happy. Uh, and actually, I really like the look as well. It's just a shame I've now got to take it all off and film another tutorial just with this one. But, there we go folks. There is the comparison between the two. So if you cannot afford blood sugar, uh, sorry, if you cannot afford blue blood, then the Revolution Forever Flawless Ice could indeed be a very, very good substitute. Um, unless you do this particular look, you're not going to be able to get exact matches but you've got a lot of similar shades, similar tones so you're going to be able to create a lot of the looks that you've seen others do with Blue Blood uh, and create them yourself and as you can see she's not short on pigmentation she know, you know, she's, she's really, really, really good um, these tinned palettes from Revolution, they're, they're Forever Flawless range. These are some of the best pigments that I've known Revolution to make. Um, I'm super, super happy with those. I've got another one of these, um, the Constellation one. So let me know if you want to see me use the Constellation palette in a tutorial anytime soon and I will bump it up the list. But if you are one of my regulars, uh, let me know, if, did you guess at the start which side was Jeffrey and which side was Revolution and did you get it right? Let me know in the comments uh, and once you have done that, please double check you're still subscribed and if you are still subscribed, please check the bell is still rung and notifications are set to all because it's a nightmare for still folks. Uh, YouTube are deleting people left, right and centre. So, 
Yeah. I got deleted from, from Noma Tang and I've watched Noma for probably 18 months now. And I'm like, I haven't seen Noma do anything recently. She's not been well. Went to her channel, boom, I'd missed about, I think I've missed about two and a half weeks worth of films. And I'm just like, really? Come on now, play fair. So yeah, if you are already a member of my beautiful 4F family, please double check you are still a member of the 4F family. If you are not a member of the 4F family, what are you doing? We are a super friendly, super helpful, super supportive group of people. And we welcome all ages, all ethnicities, all sexual orientations, all religions, everything. So long as you are polite to each other in the comments, that's all I ask. So uh, if this is the first one of my films you've seen, uh, I've got an awful lot more you can go and check uh, to see if you, if you haven't managed to decide from this one film whether you want to continue watching me or not. Why not check out a few of my others and, uh, you know, maybe you'll feel inclined to turn that subscribe button from red to grey for me and ring my bell, or ring my bell, or not, whichever, I don't mind, I just, I hope you found this helpful and informative. Right. That's quite enough for me from one day, because I've still got at least one more film to do. Hopefully two, if my pain levels will let me. So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.